I'm Simon Crompton, founder of PermanStyle.com. In this video series, we're looking at how to look after and maintain fine men's clothes. In our second video on shoe polishing, we'll be looking at how to achieve a high shine with Gatsiano and Girling in London. Shoe polishing can be a very satisfying way to interact with your clothes and something that's really only possible with leather products, actually making them look better over time. However, shoe instructions vary wildly, with everyone swearing by his or her method. Even just in the application of water, there are those that spit, soak or spray. In my experience, the important thing to remember is there's more than one way to get to the same result. So try out the different methods and find out what works for you and for the effect you want. With that in mind, this will be a shoe shining film with greater discussion and context. Okay, uh, let's talk about now the polish, applying on the shoe, the polish stage, once you've had the cream, once you've prepared it, once the cream's been on there and probably been brushed off or dried, then you're starting to apply the polish. Yeah. How many kind of layers or stages do you do in applying the polish to the shoe? Well, I mean, I always start with uh, brushing on. Okay. Uh, so basically taking like a, a horsehair brush. Uh, it's quite a stiff horsehair brush, not one of the softer ones. Dipping just the end of the brush into the polish. Yeah. And then brushing around the shoe. So starting from the one side round to the other. Just so you get a nice even coat okay. on, on the pair. Because I just find that using the brush to get the polish on, you can get it into like the broguing and get it right. down into the, the feather lines, you know, and... and uh, uh, it, it just it's a good way of getting a nice, even, thick yeah. coat. Yeah, because I, I guess most people use sometimes their fingers, but mostly a cloth to work that in. And the problem with the cloth is you can't really work it into the broken holes yeah. or around the seams. Yeah, or... you're, you're limited to the, the access you have to, to yeah. certain parts of the shoe. And particularly, I guess, the, the, the feather line, which is where the, the welt meets the upper of the shoe, it's quite useful getting it in there to kind of protect the shoe from yeah. weather, etc. And you can't really get it in there with um, a cloth no. as well. No, that's right. So, yeah, I always, always start with the brush on. Okay. Yeah. And then then you would start to use a cloth at the next stage? Yeah, so once it's, it's brushed on, uh, some people might say leave it. Yeah. They may leave it half an hour or something like that. Yeah. Um, depending on, you know, if you need to get the shoe done quick, you, yeah. you, you maybe five minutes, you don't even, but you don't even need to do that really. Yeah. Okay. Um, I tend to like the polish to still be a bit wet um, when I start polishing. Yeah. Because if I leave it too long, it can uh, dry onto the shoe and maybe okay. leave streaks okay. uh, on it and stuff like that, which you don't want, okay. uh, or spots of dry polish. Okay, so you've applied it with a brush, you yeah. haven't brushed it off, it's, and it's not entirely dried, but dried out a little bit. Then you start working just polish with a the, with the cloth? Uh, yeah, just a, a little bit of polish on, on the cloth, yeah. and then you start working. So I'd start on the cap, yeah. and then I'd go to one side of the vamp, yeah back to the back of the shoe, yeah. the heel, and then the inside of the heel, okay. and then the inside of the vamp. And so I go round evenly, yeah. uh, so that I know that I'm getting an even uh, polish on every single part of the shoe. And it's only, but not much polish on the cloth at that point. Yeah. It's, all, it's all really, the polish is on with the brush yeah. already. So yeah. you're just working it in with a little bit extra. The next stage would be when you start to use water and polish together to try and bring up the shine. Yeah. Right. So once you've gone around that, usually the what you do at that stage on the vamps, areas like that, that, that is usually enough yeah. to, for, the, for the final shine. It's yeah. the, the toes and the heels that you really need to, to get the extra shine on. And, what, and some people use their fingers, I think, particularly to work in the polish. Why yeah. do you think people do that? And have you ever tried doing that as well? I, I have tried it. Um, it's, it's funny. It's one thing. I think it's very much for the people who are in like shoe shine stores and things like that. Yeah. Because they, they have customers come in, give them the shoes. They want them done and they want to, to leave. So yeah. they, they have to do it quick. On the finger, on the shoe, on the finger, on the shoe. They go round it really fast yeah. and build it up very quick. And it does seem, it does work. I've seen, I mean, I've seen the results firsthand. Yeah. And they can get a very high shine very quick. Mm -hmm. the, my only concern is that a lot of polish is going on, or it seems like a lot of polish is going on. Yeah. And certainly they cover the whole shoe with a lot of polish. And I don't like to put a lot on the vamps because of cracking. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Possible of, possibility of cracking. Yeah. It looks great when you first done it. Yeah. But it's what happens after There's that. There's a risk of doing it later. Yeah. I'm trying to apply too much at that point, yeah. possibly as well. And in terms of uh, other materials, we talked about the brush. What kind of cloth do you use when you're doing that? When I'm polishing, I yeah. use. Uh, I actually the one I have is from the Hanger Project. Basically, like a, a shirt, like material. Yeah. Very tight weave cotton. 
that uh, it doesn't there's no give in it yeah um and it's it works very well it's it it's not uh there's no uh fiber yeah comes off it yeah f straight from when you use it from new yeah yeah, yeah. um because some polishes uh, sorry po some cloths that you use you have to work a lot to get them to, to sort of do use. what you want them to do i guess you so generally you're using usually a piece of scrap cotton like shirting or it could even be a t-shirt or a handkerchief yeah. or something but you yeah. basically want a cotton that's really fine yeah and closely woven yeah so that it's not going to move around anywhere yeah and something where no fibers or kind of lint or that's stuff right. are going to come off if it you as use well. like a cheap material mm. it doesn't you know about it because yeah. it does it can first of all if you've got like a, a, a gimped edge on the shoe so you know yeah. like a quite a rough edge it will just you'll get holes in it very yeah, quickly yeah, yeah. Okay. um so you have to have a good quality cloth okay you take your tin of polish this is sophia black so uh, i'm going to continue with the black on this particular pair uh, take it. This is a hard horsehair brush, mm -hmm. and this the amount you need on the on the brush is not a vast amount. So you're basically just kind of smearing it there. Yeah. With the brush. So that's okay. that's just like the corner of the brush, and you can yeah. see that's not a great deal on there. I uh, guess there's the slightly more danger of using too much on yeah. with the polish, isn't it? Because you you could build up too much, and it could start to crack. I, I think start with that amount. If you need more, you can put more on, but don't put too much on. Um, so then, basically, you just go in a circular motion around the shoe I might just a dab more and you're making sure they're to kind of work in around the heart working yep. around the seams getting working in, around into the, lines. the yeah getting into all the little bits and again you're using uh, a, a black there which is particularly for this color but yeah. generally I guess there's there's less danger with using the wrong color on a polish because it's got less pigment in it anyway. that's right like like I say as a general rule stick with the, the color that matches the the shoe um, so this is the... Oh, and you're just going on quite lightly there, you're not trying to kind of force it I'm not, push There's it a little the bit of pressure. There is a little bit of pressure. It's not uh, a massive amount, but because you can, if you push too hard, you can uh, push lines into the shoe and, and stuff like that, but you don't, you don't want to do that. Uh, so that's enough polish mm -hmm. on the shoe to, to get it started. And is there any advantage to waiting for it to dry at that point, do you think? Some, but ideally, I mean, uh, one thing I've found over the years, if you leave it too long, uh, you can cause uh, streaks or dry spots, mm. which can be uh, a bit of a nightmare to get rid of. Mm. Um, and it kind of defeats the object of it, really. Okay. Um, so it's, um, but really, I, I, I wouldn't say you have to wait that long. I mean, you can, some people can leave it overnight. You can leave it overnight, but... Personally, I don't, I don't get on with that very well. So now we're putting on the polish with the cloth. Yep, so get the cloth. Basically, um, some people try and like have a special method where they wrap it around in different ways to hold it tight. I used to use a elastic band or something like that to hold it on, but you've got to be careful of the blood flow in your fingers. <laughs> so basically, I just make sure that it's, it's on my finger tight and that the area where you're polishing with yeah. is, is flat yeah so I, I guess with any of these things like we talked about before it's about what works for you yeah and what the objective is and that's here right. the aim is just make sure that's smooth around your fingers and you exactly. haven't got anything that's going to cause any streaks and it's it's basically so it's on like that i'm holding it tight on my finger yeah uh, it's not loose at all it's really tight on the finger then i'll get the shoe first thing i'll do i've got the polish is dip a bit in it's not a, a, a large amount mm -hmm. just dipping it in and then with quite a lot of pressure so more pressure here than you had with the brush you're really trying yeah, to yeah. work it into I'm the push, shoe now. i'm pushing it in quite a lot yeah so some circular motion making sure that you get all the areas of the shoe we are still moving quite fast as well you're not yeah. really kind uh, of doing it that it's really just applying it at that yeah. point this is the important thing so and i always have a method where i always go like i go cap center back and i do them in sections so i know that i'm getting an even amount okay on on the whole shoe yeah this is the important thing is just making sure that you've covered everywhere basically yeah. when you're going all the way yeah. around yeah it's interesting actually the effect of waiting a little bit like even after just a couple of minutes of sitting here and changing it i mean i find that if i've got maybe do two pairs of shoes at a time by mm. the time i've onto the if i do polish on the first shoe by the time i've moved on to the fourth one and come back again actually it's had 10 minutes to dry so actually you've 
the quality yeah. started a little bit and then you're working in again now. So that, that's me gone round the whole shoe. Mm. Uh, it's, that's enough to, to get it started. Um, but then I will go back to the toe. Okay. So I've worked the polish in initially. It's all quite nice and even. I can't see any streaks, mm -hmm. and that, that's a good thing. So then I'll go back to the toe and get a bit more and just concentrate in circles, slightly less pressure okay. than it was before. So in, in terms of places on the shoe you're kind of doing the polish here, um, we said before that the, um, the toe and then the kind of the back heel of the shoe is really where you can put yeah. more polish in. Yeah. And that's because actually the, the vamp where the shoe creases, um, there's yeah. a risk if you put too much on there, it's gonna to start to crack. Exactly, if, if you concentrate on these areas here, then with a lot of polish, you will find that when you wear it, those areas, depending on how much you put on, it could flake, you know, the polish could flake or, or whatever, um, and or the, it just creases and it's, it can be a bit, yeah. you know. I mean, shoes crease anyway, That's, that does happen, but it doesn't help it. Yeah, but you don't want to start cracking or great kind of coloured no. lines when, no, that that's of, right. when it goes across there. I mean, I, I know some people would not even use any polish at all in the vamp to try and avoid that, no. but that's right. in, your, in your case, you've put on one layer with yeah. the brush and that, that creates a level of protection, but you're not putting on extra layers no. afterwards. No. So I've concentrated a little bit on the toe and then I'll go to the, the heel and do the same sort of thing there. Still, I've not put any wet on yet. Yeah. And again, I mean, some people again use their fingers to kind of put this on. Um, yeah. Do you I, find that actually that, that creates some moisture when you put well, it on I as mean, well? Well, I mean, one thing you can do, it's like um, I've seen somebody, they, they get a bit on the finger like that and then they, they work it really quick like that. Mm. So they just like really push it in. And, and it does build it up, but you can see already, just from doing that, it's gone quite dark mm. straight away because you're putting a lot of polish and pushing it straight in. Um, and it, but it does work. It does work. And, and it's quite fascinating to see because the, I, I would say probably the, the, uh, the natural you the know, moisture, the, moisture of the there. finger yeah. it adds the water for you. So yeah. you don't really you know, add as much. But then this is working the other side of the heel. And again, I've still not used any wet. And it's, it's at a point now where it's ready to probably start to go on to the to using bring a that bit mirror of wet. polish. Okay. So what I would do now is I'd go back to the, the toe, uh, but we've also got this here. This is, uh, it's gone quite dry, this particular one, but this is mirror gloss. Ah, okay. So it's the, uh, the Saphir polish talked about earlier. mirror gloss. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you only really use that when you're finishing your polish. Um, but use a mixture of the both because if you just use the mirror gloss, it's so dry, mm. you know. But you just need to get a little bit on there like that, and then you can work it on the toe. And so you're going to apply the water in a second. I mean, lots yeah. of people use different ways of applying the water. I know yeah. some people spray it on or they yeah. kind of dip it with a finger. How, how have you kind of put on water generally? <laughs> I'm generally spit and polish, okay. uh, the old traditional way, because. I can control the amount of water. I've got some water here in a lid as well. Sometimes it does help to have that. If yeah. you want to get a high shine, you need a little bit more water. But generally, I find the spit and polish works for me. Um, and I'll show you, it's, it can be, you know, some people struggle to control this side of things. <laughs> I was going to say, that must be the issue, presumably, is like, yeah. you want to kind of control it as much as possible. If you haven't done it before, it must be yeah. quite hard initially to so control that. This is basically, I got, that's it. And there's a tiny little bit of wet. It's like more of a spray. Okay. And that's enough wet for me. But again, there isn't, there isn't a, a big difference. I mean, people have people talking about the fact that maybe the, the enzymes and the spit helps with the polish. Yep. But you, I yep. mean, you get, you get a very similar effect, really, whichever one of these you're doing. It's just a question of kind of controlling it as best you can. Right? Yeah, that's right. And, and but, I mean, you can, there's, you could dip in there, but what you'd have to do is make sure you've not got not got too much on there. Too much on there, and then and then. And you can also use just dip your finger in to kind of get a drop of water on the yeah, shoe bottom as well. Yeah, you could dip your well. finger in and just dab it. Yeah, but just about um, controlling the amount you're doing. Yeah. Okay. But and what's the what's the risk of putting on too much water? What can happen then? Well, the risk is you would know straight away when you've done it because you'll get an, a, like a spot, like a circle, or just an area where suddenly the shine is just gone mm. and it's just where it's soaked into the leather. It's going to become sort of saturated yeah, and you can't just polish it at all. it and you just can't. And what do you have to do then? It's got to dry. I mean, you can use a dry part of the cloth to rub over it and try and blend in the rest of the polish around it. Mm. But ideally, 
you've got to wait and let it let wait it dry. And dry. I mean, well, not even the next day. You can wait just you know a little while. It doesn't have to be too long. Mm. But the other thing you can do is because your cloth might have got too wet as well, so is changed to another part of the cloth. Yeah. Because then you're starting fresh with that. Yeah. But you can see I'm still still concentrating on the toe at the moment. And there's no particular order of doing polish then water or water then polish particularly. At the moment, no. Uh, I, I would say at the moment it's, well, polish and then water. But then I find as I get towards the end, so I'll, I've got quite a lot on there now, so I'll go to the, to the heels. Um, I find that uh, towards the end I'll then change the order. So I'll put water on first and then polish. And to, for me, that seems to help get that high shine mm. finish. It's, um, it seems to work quite well. You're using less water, I think, than most people I think I've seen doing it at this stage, but yeah. you, um, you don't find you need that much really to kind of bring up the, the well, shine. Not really, because the, obviously the, the polish does have moisture in it, apart from the, the mirror, the mirror gloss obviously doesn't, but uh, it does have moisture in it. You just have to add that little bit more to, to give it that, that spring into shining. I mean, you can see that's, that's starting to come up now. And there's no risk there of putting on too many, you're putting a layer of polish on top of a layer of polish on top yeah. of a layer of polish, but that's fine to building up. You're not removing the previous layer by putting it more, more no. on. Not at all. I mean, it, it's, I mean, it just helps build it up because I'm not putting a lot on. I'm not scooping it and putting it on. It's always just a little bit at a time. But then I'd probably now try the opposite way around and a little bit more water and then see what happens. You just got, always got to keep an eye on it. I mean, something else I would say, it's always good to have a good amount of light mm -hmm. where you're see polishing. You're yeah, at home I have uh, like a, a lamp, one of those movable lamps, so I can have it quite close okay. so I can see what I'm doing. But it's always good, or if the weather's nice, sitting outside and polishing is, mm -hmm. is quite nice because you can see everything then. I guess um, also if it was a, um, an old shoe, as we said before, that actually was shine up pretty well. You might only need one or two of these layers of polish rather than quite yeah. a lot of them. And, the, and so at this last point where you're really sort of building up that shine, you seem to be using yeah. slightly less... A lot less pressure. A lot less pressure, a, lot, yeah. a, a little bit less uh, polish as well, yeah. and you're just well, kind of working it slowly around the toe. Thing is, there's a lot, enough polish on it now. Just every so often, you just take a little bit extra just to, to move the polish that's already on it. Mm. But... Um, we talk about other, other methods at this point, I often feel like, like breathing on the toe because you just yeah. need a little bit of condensation, yeah, you can which is quite satisfying. Do that. Just gives it that little bit of kick. And again, again, at the very end, there's lots of methods that people would use, like yeah. working a chamois really fast across it or using a pair of tights or something. Yeah. What do you think of those kind of methods? It's all, all relevant, all works. Pers I've never really used anything other than a cloth and spit and polish. Mm. In the workshop, we would use very fast buffing wheels that at the very end with a very soft brush on them and they, they move and you just turn the, the toe over that just mm. to give it that final little little glow but obviously not everybody has those and so just a cloth and, and a little bit of wet and a bit of polish. But I guess you, the, all those kind of methods of finishing off the shoe at the very end yeah. you're trying to achieve the same thing which is you're trying to use a very very fine very soft material which is have no chance of leaving any kind of streaks or yeah. uh, scratches or anything on that to just have a very, very final layer to make it as smooth as possible. Oh, that's looking really good, Pete. I, also, yeah, I wanted you. to mention as well that you, um, for somebody who doesn't want to bring up a mirror shine like this, brushing it and buffing off with a brush could be a very effective way of bringing up a nice kind of subtle shine as well, can't yeah. it? Yeah, you can brush your polish on initially and then you've a very soft uh, hair brush mm. just over the top will just bring a shine up just enough for you to for it to look good yeah, yeah absolutely yeah okay the next time you go it would be easy to get that mirror shine worked up on it and you know it, it's just it's a good thing to make sure you do polish as you know regularly to get that shoe looking the way it should yeah you know because uh, you can see a lot of sad shoes that, <laughs> that really need the help yeah well they, <laughs> it's such a lovely thing about leather shoes is the fact that you can work up and they do look better over time yeah you know and, and a lot of people don't really get that benefit out of nice shoes which is a yeah. shame that's a, absolutely yeah well thank you very much pete thanks for it's showing an us absolute that. pleasure thanks
more practical information, check out permanentstyle.com, the UK's leading website on craft and classic style.